All right, Don, I'm about to go live with the program if you're ready. I'm here. All right, all right, all right. Welcome everyone to another fantastic day. We have another guest speaker here with us today and we're gonna be welcome in in just one minute. Uh, our author, guest author today, and our next Read Around the Program, Read Around the World program starts right now. Don't forget, teachers, you can put your questions in so you can get those asked live here on the show into your chat if you're watching on the Zoom webinar. If you're watching one of our live streams somewhere, you can uh, answer with the right in the chat of your live stream, or you can use Twitter, you can use hashtag read around the world or at learn ATW for learn around the world. All right, today's program starts now. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, everyone. This is our live cam out over the Casco Bay in Portland, Maine. That's where we're coming to you live today on our guest speaker that we have today with Read Around the World. So Portland is located on ancestral land of the Wabanaki Confederacy. We like to go ahead and acknowledge that before we start all of our programs. This is the area that runs from Nova Scotia, Canada, all the way through Vermont in the USA. So this is the native land we live on in Portland, Maine. So I want everyone to think about their own homes today and where you live throughout our program and try to think about the story we're going to hear today and compare it to your home. How is this place similar to my home? How is it maybe a little bit different for, from our homes? All right, so without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest author today. So we have uh, uh, Dawn Doig with us here today. Hello, Dawn. Welcome. Thank you for having me. All right, so Dawn's going to really quickly, uh, she's coming to us from a very special live location today. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up a video to show everyone where you're coming to us live from today. But let's go ahead and see, can you tell us where you're watching from today? Or sorry, where you're speaking to us from today? I am speaking to you from Yaoundé, Cameroon, Africa. All right, so that's amazing. And what time is it where you are? It is 6.33 p.m. to be exact right now. Oh, oh so you're <laughs> speaking, to us, speaking to us from the future. Awesome. And what was your weather like today? <laughs> uh, it was actually sunny. Um, I don't recall seeing any rain, but I was in, in classes all day. It is our rainy season right now. So um, we never know whether we're going to have rain or not. <laughs> and when it does rain, it really is. Um, I have never seen uh, thunder and lightning and rainfall quite the way I have seen here. So it can be quite amazing to see. But uh, not none today that I'm aware of. So maybe tomorrow again. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Well, um, just really quickly, I just want to let our audience know that you have been a worldwide traveler for over 20 years. You've lived in multiple countries and you're living in Cameroon right now. And you also write books. And so today I want to remind our audience that feel free to ask uh, Dawn, any question today about her book that she's about to introduce and read to us, as well as anything about her travels or about living in Cameroon. She even sent us some photos that she's going to share with us and uh, show you a little bit about where she lives in Cameroon. And so uh, feel free to take this time and go ahead and introduce your book, Dawn, and any background information you would like to tell us before we start uh, showing uh, the images of your book. Okay, well today I'm going to be reading Hair Piece and uh, this book was actually written here in Cameroon. Um, prior to coming to Cameroon, I was not personally aware that many of the beautiful women and girls here wear uh, hair pieces, wigs and extensions. So that was quite intriguing to me. Um, so it really made me take a closer look at our perceptions of beauty and um, our self-image, how we do perceive ourselves in comparison to other people. And so it was actually uh, many of my students and colleagues and just generally 
the women and girls here in Cameroon who inspired this story. So I hope you will enjoy Hairpiece. So, why can't I have beautiful hair too? Johanita stomped off to her room, a single tear shimmering in the corner of her eye. Mother watched as she disappeared through the doorway, then turned and continued to get the school lunches ready. There wasn't much she could do when Joanita was in one of her moods. As she sat sulking on the corner of her bed, Joanita could not hide her jealousy. Images of the girls at her school, some with long locks flowing down their backs, others with curls swirling round their faces, and even others with bobs bouncing on their shoulders, taunted and teased her. She shook her head and tried to erase the images from her mind. Her own short, tight kinks of hair did not budge as her head moved back and forth. Oh, how she longed to feel soft ringlets caressing her cheeks or strands of loose hairs gently tickling her forehead in a gentle breeze. Saturday morning, Joanita was sitting watching TV. Would you like to go to the mall and get a new dress? Mother asked. We could get a lovely new headband to match. Joanita shrugged her shoulders and slowly glanced in her mother's direction. It might make you feel better, Mother smiled. Sure, Joanita grumbled. The mall was always a very busy place. It was full of life. A low humming sound filled the air with chit chat of people as they strolled the long corridors, making their way in and out of stores along the way. It reminded Joanita of bees busy in a hive, buzzing as they went the business of making honey. Then she saw it, a hair salon, and not just any hair salon. She ran up to the window and her eyes grew large with excitement as she scanned the mannequin heads that were smiling back at her. Their lovely hairdos beckoned her. She turned to look at her mother with a huge grin on her face. On Monday morning, Joanita skipped onto the playground. The other children stopped to stare as she gently brushed the blonde curls out of her face. Joanita smiled and waved a little wave as she made her way to the monkey bars. Wow, look at you, Brianna chimed. We look like twins. Joanita cheered as she took Brianna's hand and skipped with her the rest of the way. Joanita loved the monkey bars, so they headed there to play. Brianna went ahead, her blonde curls bouncing behind her as she made her way to the top. Joanita followed, but by the second bar, her right arm got tangled in some of the curls. She swooshed her arm around, trying to get untangled. By the time she got to the top, her curls were a matted mess. Joanita felt like a queen sitting on top of the world. When the bell rang, she tried to make her way down, but her left arm got caught in the tangles. As she tried to loosen it, her arm became more and more tangled. By the time she reached the bottom rung, she was holding the disheveled hairpiece in her hand. Joanita plopped the hair back on her head and headed off to class without a care in the world. On Tuesday morning, Joanita skipped onto the playground. The other children stopped to stare as she gently tucked some loose red hairs behind her ear. Joanita smiled and waved as she made her way to the swings. Wow, look at you, Kira ex Kezi exclaimed. We look like twins, Joanita cheered as she took Kezia's hand and skipped with her the rest of the way. Joanita pumped as high as she could on the swings. She went higher and higher. Suddenly, the wind picked up and swoosh! Her lovely red bob flew right off her head, 
and hooked on a branch on the mango tree nearby. Children were giggling and pointing. As she made her way to class, Cole ran up and stifling a giggle asked, what happened to your hair? Ah, uh, it wasn't right for me, Joanita replied. On Wednesday morning, Joanita skipped onto the playground. The other children stopped to stare as she gently scooped up a handful of long braids and dropped them over her right shoulder. She smiled and waved a little wave as she made her way to the merry-go-round. Wow, look at you, Sylvia clapped. We look like twins, Joanita cheered as she took Sylvie's hand and skipped with her the rest of the way. Joanita held onto the side of the merry-go-round and began to run. Run, run, run. The merry-go-round went faster and faster. The children were all giggling. Yay, Joanita, they cheered. Jump on, they hollered. Joanita went to the jump, but just then the braids whipped in front of her face and got tangled around the bar. She plopped down to enjoy the ride. When the merry-go-round stopped, her braids were a knot around the bar. I'll get that later, she sighed, as she left the braids behind and scooted off to class. Each day that week, Joanita tried a new style. Each day, she picked a twin, and they skipped and played together. Lucky for her, the lady at the hair salon had said she could try a different hairstyle till she discovered the one that felt just right. There were so many styles to choose from, straight and silky, shoulder length and bobby, long and curly, short and spiky. There were so many colors to choose from, blonde, brunette, brown, black, auburn, with high, with high lights, purple, rainbow stripes, blue, decisions, decisions. She returned the styles that didn't work, the ones that got all tangled and that she found difficult to manage. The following Monday was the start of a new week and with it came a new student. Zara had big blue eyes with dainty pencil thin brown eyebrows arched above them. She, she smiled and shook everyone's hand. Joanne needed a way that Zara was wearing a scarf over her head. It was a beautiful red scarf, but she wanted her to take it off so she could see her hair. Could she be the next twin? Joanita soon found out through all the meetings and greetings that Zara was from California. Her father worked for the embassy and they had been relocated to Cameroon for him to take up his new job. I wonder what kind of hair they have in California. That's what Joanita was thinking. At recess, Joanita asked Zara if she would like to join her on the swing. Sure, that sounds like fun, she replied as they swung higher and higher, pumping their legs faster and the two girls giggled. Joanita had her long, shiny blonde hair tied tight behind her head with a purple hair tie so her blonde locks would stay. Maddie, her twin for one, taught her that secret. Suddenly, the wind picked up and swoosh! Zara's lovely red scarf flew right off her head and hooked on a branch on the mango tree nearby. Children stopped what they were doing, gasped, and pointed. The swings came to a stop. Joanita stared. The sun sparkled like diamonds on Zara's bald head, her beautiful, hairless, shiny bald head. Head turned downward, Zara dug her left shoe into the soft wood chips that covered the ground under the swings. Her right hand gently caressed the top of her bare head. Speaking just above a whisper, she broke the silence. I have alopecia totalis. My hair doesn't grow. 
Joe Anita's jaw moved up and down as she tried to think of something to say. It's okay, Zara said, looking up. My mom has it too. It's not contagious or anything though, so you won't catch it. Don't worry. Joe Anita sat. Joe Anita thought. I'm not worried, Joe Anita said, as she reached for the blonde ponytail at the back of her head. You're my friend, and that's all that matters. The next morning, Joe Anita skipped onto the playground. The other children stopped to stare as she gently stood her almost bald head. The time All right, we just dropped Dawn Doig, and she should be reconnecting in just one minute. As we pause right here in our story, we're almost to the end of it. Go ahead and start adding your questions in the chat for author Dawn, and also where are you watching from today? We would love to give you a shout out live here on the program as we start to open up the floor for questions. Again, a reminder, you can add your questions into the chat of the Zoom webinar if that's where you're watching. If you're watching our live stream anywhere, you can use the hashtag read around the world or at us, learn ATW over on Twitter. Either way, we'll see your questions and we'll make sure to ask them live to Dawn as soon as she reconnects with us back on the program to finish reading our story here that we're all learning about today. All right, so it looks like Dawn has just reconnected with us. Uh, as she's doing that, uh, virtual shout out goes to Mrs. Powers grade two class, virtual learning class, big shout out to all of you. And uh, please let us know where you're watching from as well. We love to know locations uh, as we are coming to you live from our studio in Portland, Maine. And of course we have Dawn back with us now from Cameroon. Welcome back Dawn. <laughs> I did, hadn't realized I had disconnected. I just can, continued reading. <laughs> so, hey, hey, it okay. happens, no problem. Technology is great <laughs> when it works, is what we like to say here. So let's go ahead and I'll tell you where we lost you. We lost you okay. uh, right when we just started this page, when, um, when she came back, leaping back onto the playground. Okay, so the next morning, Joe Anita skipped under the playground. The other children stopped to stare as she gently stroked her almost bald head, the tiny kinks of black hair just barely visible. Joe Anita smiled and waved her a little wave as she made her way to the teeter-totter. Wow, look at you, Zara exclaimed as she winked at her friend. Look like Twins, Joanita cheered as she took Zara's hand and skipped with her the rest of the way. Joanita smiled to herself, for she knew then that she had finally made peace with her hair. And that is the end. I hope you enjoyed hair piece. We did. I definitely enjoyed hair piece, and I don't think any of us could have predicted how timely it would have been as well uh, for probably many of our adult watchers out there if they watch the Academy Awards. So um, as we get some questions coming in, looks like um, uh, Mrs. Powers' classroom is saying that was so wonderful and thank you for reading and sharing with us. Um, so if you are, have never been on a Read Around the World event before, it's a pretty simple live event where we listen to a read aloud, which we just concluded. So right now, we really love to answer live questions here on the program. We still have a book giveaway coming up in the next few minutes, and we also have photographs 
photographs that uh, that Dawn has shared with us that she'll be uh, narrating us through some of those photographs to give us a little bit of better idea about where she currently lives. So again, please add your questions into the chat. And I have many questions as well. So first and foremost, I'll start it off. And what was your inspiration for writing this book? Um, as I briefly at the beginning, uh, when I moved to Africa, I was actually not aware that a lot of these absolutely beautiful girls wear hair, hair pieces and extensions. So I'll see even little ones as young as three with long braids that have been attached to their hair. Um, so it was quite intriguing for me to see that um, and made me really think about our perceptions of beauty and what we consider beautiful and when we look at ourselves and compare ourselves to others, um, what we're looking at and, you know, those things that we wish we had. Um, I can honestly say I've always been very self-conscious of my nose and one of the other books that I've written is actually <laughs> called Big Noses Are Beautiful <laughs> because um, I did struggle with that when I was young. And so I think um, just giving children the message that they are beautiful the way they are and um, accept ourselves the way we are and um, because I needed to learn that myself. And so when I saw that, I did see um, a you know, the, the hair pieces and the wigs and the extensions here, it really did make me look at that much more and um, think about, you know, what we consider beautiful. What, what, is, um, what is beauty? Uh, is beauty your hair? Is it, is it your eyes? Or is it and I just, just want to you, our grade six French class read um, the French version of hair piece. And these were some of the comments that they had about it. One student said, no one should be excluded. So these, this was their reflection on, on the story. We should be happy with who we are and what we have. We should accept everyone as they are. We should love ourselves and we should not envy others. So I, I thought that was wonderful for them to share with me their takeaway from the story, especially having read it in French because many of the students uh, French is language so they're learning a new language and they were learning about positive self-image in in a second language so it's really very neat that's so wonderful I you know what this story reminds me of is uh, another children's story about insects and how this ant is walking around talking to his friends the butterfly the bee and the ant is so envious that he can't fly and he doesn't have all these other um, attributes of some of the other insects but it comes to find out it's the other insects they envied the ant because the ant's so strong and i think it's a great reminder it reminded me of the story when she's wearing all the different wigs of uh each and every version of all of you out there right we all have our own individual personalities and each of them sometimes we may not like our own but i guarantee you people look at us and maybe they want something that you have one of your unique personality attributes that maybe you look at other people and think the same thing sometimes so that's kind of where my mind went to during the story and honestly it's my um my career change into teaching um that, that really opened my eyes more to this because i've had more um direct experience with young people and um you know hearing some of their concerns uh hearing some of the the thing they say to compare themselves to others. Um, in my previous career as an audiologist, I wouldn't have had that opportunity. So I, I do think that teaching and um, working one-on-one -on -one with a lot of my students really um, opened my eyes to some of this and the inner struggles that many people have with, um, you know, beauty and such and all of that. Right. How wonderful is that? So we definitely have, um, I can see we have uh, three classrooms joining us. And uh, just so another okay. reminder, uh, if you would, please add your questions and make sure you get them in and uh, early and we can ask those and answer those live here on the program. I can see everything that you're writing when you do. So we uh, definitely want those uh, as you come up with them. Until then, uh, I think you have some photographs you would like to share with us and I will pull those up. And do you want okay. to uh, just explain to us what we are all looking at? 
certainly. <laughs> Uh, so these these are actually some of our students. Um, we have an inter we're an international baccalaureate school, so um, many of the well a large part of it is inquiry based. So these, these are working on an activity together. Um, honestly, I can't remember exactly which one it was because I just looked through all my photos, but um, I wanted you to see the young girl's hair in particular. Um, because she is wearing some of the extensions attached to her own hair. Um, and that's very, very typical. Um, we will occasionally have some of the girls come in with their very natural hair. And I, I, again, I just think uh, they, they're lovely, you know? And um, again, the feedback that I've had, even from our local students and our local staff have been very positive because um, it made them also look at this in a different way. So, but yeah, I'm not exactly sure. These are students were in grade two, so um, not, I'm not sure what they were brainstorming there, but it was one of their unit of inquiry activities. Uh, this was a read aloud in grade two. This was ladder. And again, um, you can see the young girl there with the pink um, bows and ties in her hair. So again, um, much of that is um, extensions. Uh, so again, in the of some of the hairstyles that we see here. And they, they certainly are lovely. Um, but again, it was um, quite an eye opener for me seeing this, especially on very young children. So yes, I, the librarian is there at the front with me <laughs> as we're, we're sharing one of my, my books. So that's um, one of our, that's our grade, our grade two classroom at our school right now here in Yaoundé. This was an assembly. Uh, again, we have a multi-purpose room where we have our assembly. We don't have, we have an outside gym, but again, often because of the weather, it, it may be smoky, it may be um, dusty, it may be raining. So we do have this large multi-purpose room where we can have our assemblies for the elementary students uh, because our school is from pre-K up to 12. So the assemblies happen at different times. So again, I wanted to share this because I see some of these young girls with the um, very exquisite hairdos. <laughs> so I, wa I wanted to share that again because it went along with the book. All right, awesome. Uh, and and shout out and let us know. And do you love assemblies at your school? So I just double checked. So we have uh, one classroom from South Carolina. So shout out to South Carolina today. Uh, a classroom from Argentina with us today. So shout out down in Argentina and Ontario, Canada. So shout out Canada oh, as cool. well, which I think you have some familiarity with. <laughs> yes, Canadian, but I'm not from Ontario. I'm from the western side, from Vancouver Island. All right. So. <laughs> shout so out to Canada. My fellow Canadian. <laughs> this is um, a fruit stand, um, so you'll see this along one of the main roads uh, with quite an, a selection of fruit. They, that's one of the in Africa is there is a lot of fruit. So mangoes, papayas, watermelon, pineapple, you name it. Um, they also sell vegetables in these uh, roadside stalls. Or you will see individual people with um, a table along the road, sitting on um, a tree trunk, you know, a, a log or a little stool, and you can see them going to to put up their things. Uh, so the woman will be on the back of a motorbike with on her stool and the bucket of fruit or whatever she's going to be selling. But it's um, quite typical to see somebody at the side, especially with bananas, bananas, mango. Go, um, pineapple. Uh, so this is someone with some limes, a bag of limes on his head. And this is also a very typical sighting here in Cameroon to see individuals carrying their wares on their head, whether they're the fruit, vegetables, um, bedding, so linens, pillows, um, you name it. So this gentleman has, I think it, they were either tablecloths, uh, looks like probably tablecloths, but you will actually see stacks of pillows and um, some of the stacks are incredibly high, which makes me wonder about their necks. <laughs> you know, they must have extremely strong necks um, and they do have a little ring that they make, they mold and then they put that on their head and then whatever they're carrying is on top of that ring. 
but um, yeah, some pillows or like um, pill throw pillows put on your couch or on your bed. Um, this is very typical. I mean, we don't really uh, pay much attention anymore because of such a regular everyday sighting. But certainly when I first came to Cameroon, it was very new to me, um, very much um, the cultural wow, you know, when I, when I saw this. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's very, very typical, everyday, normal kind of thing that you will see you're driving anywhere. And um, we have been to a number of other African countries and we have seen this as well. The only thing that I haven't seen, and I do a picture, was um, the shoe on the head. So the um, here these two young men are selling shoes. So they will walk around with shoes on the head and then the matching shoe either in their backpack or they'll have them draped over their arms. And uh, this is something that every time I still am like, wow, <laughs> because I've been to Rwanda, Uganda, um, Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and I have not seen this in any of those other countries. So it seems to be very unique to Cameroon. Again, so th this is foam. So like uh, foam uh, sponges that you would use to wash your car. Um, and we'll see the men walking in large groups like this, uh, selling their, their sponges. So they'll go to, um, we don't, you don't have the car washes like you would see in North America or some others. Um, you'll no normally see a car being washed in an empty lot um, or just uh, on a, a dirt road beside a building. So these, these men would take their sponges and sell them to those individuals who are making money by washing cars. This, this is a mattress. <laughs> One of the things we We've noticed that motor bikes um, an amazing way of transporting goods, uh, whether it be chairs. Um, we've seen stacks of chairs. We've seen uh, armchairs. Uh, this individual with a mattress. We've seen a couch. Uh, you name it. Um, the, if you can get it on a motorbike, onto the back of a motorbike, then you can transport it. <laughs> it's the same with the taxis. Um, uh, I, I included a couple of pictures of taxis. Yeah. This common site, especially in the morning, as they're taking their goods to market. So you'll see bags and bags of onions, um, different kinds of vegetables. Uh, so especially onions, big, big bags of onions, um, leeks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And we have actually seen vehicles that have collapsed because the, you know the whole bottom part has given way from from the weight of these goods on top of them. So you'll see a, a taxi or a car. Look, I mean, these are onions. You'll see the, the car at the side of the road with um, everything's just buckled from from the weight. And I don't know how long it takes for that to happen, but you know uh, the car can only um, carry so much for <laughs> so long a time, and then it eventually gives in. Uh, so this Cameroonians seem to be, from what I've noticed, they are um, very proud of their country. So you'll see a lot of the flags on display. Uh, they recently had a soccer challenge here, <laughs> soccer challenge uh, for Africa. And so it was held in parts of Cameroon. And so we saw lots of flags, hats, um, vuvuzelas with the, the color flag. So very patriotic um, is what I would say um, from what I've noticed and what I've experienced. And that, that's their flag. Ah, this is a favorite place of mine because I really um, love primates, monkeys, um, they're, my favorite animal without question and about 45 kilometers outside Yaoundé they have the Mifu primate sanctuary so where they've rescued um, what we have there is the um, lowland gorilla the uh, there are chimpanzees and then there are a couple of other monkeys but primarily the lowland gorillas and then the, um, the chimpanzees and they have quite a collection there so they rescue these animals and take care of them. 
Uh, they even have young ones there, which we never get to see, unfortunately, but they are taking care of the babies as well. And from what I understand, just before COVID, they were trying to create a pangolin sanctuary as well. Um, the pangolin is one of the most extinct animals in the world. Um, they're taken for their scales and uh, used for medicinal purposes. So um, there is a group here that are trying to save the pangolin. Um, it would be interesting if students have never heard of the pangolin to look it up. It's a beautiful creature, very gentle. Um, but because of COVID, I'm actually not aware if the sanctuary has opened. Certainly right, right now, uh, we cannot go out to Meifu um, unless you, I think you book ahead and have a private tour, but at, um, it's not open to the public. I did manage to go there twice, so really enjoyed it and uh, actually got to see uh, a load come out of the bushes and pound his chest. And I was not aware that they actually cup their hands when they do that. So it makes more of a boop, 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 boop noise rather than what you normally see in the movies where they, it's just a pounding. There's more of a very unique sound to it. And when I went there and saw that, I just happened to have my camera on and was videotaping when the gorilla came out of the bush and did that. And I rewound it and watched it about 20 times. <laughs> it was just so fascinating, um, but absolutely beautiful. And um, so, so really happy to see that people are doing what they can to preserve them and, and keep going extinct. Sorry, um, here I'll show you this other picture. I, I, I'm pulling an, up, up an image for there one for everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's the silverback, he, and he came out of uh, when he came out of the bush. But he came out like that, and then he stood up and under his chest, so you can imagine. Oh, disconnected again? No, sorry, I was um, pulling up an image of the um, pangolin and uh, oh, okay. I wanted to uh, just share it with everyone. Uh, really quickly. The, the um, pangolin group here actually brought one to our school before COVID. And so the students were able to see this gentle creature. They are nocturnal. So they're they're nocturnal. Yes, that's my understanding. <laughs> so I hope I'm correct. <laughs> this one certainly was sleeping the whole time that it was visiting at the school. Got you. All right. Well, I'll see if I can get up in a minute. <laughs> it's taking me a little bit longer. Um, so as you're doing that, I just want to make sure we have to. There's, there's lots of images out there, but of course, a little um, digital citizenship for everyone out there. So you need to make sure you have the rights or it's okay to share those. And because we are a public broadcast here, um, there's a lot of them. So you may have to just do a quick search with your classroom. Um, let's like um, shout out coming from Mrs. Uh, Martinez classroom from Buenos Aires in Argentina. So shout out to you. Please add your questions in the chat. We would love to get to uh, make sure we answer your questions as we wait for some questions and continue the conversation for the the time that we do have here before um, classrooms need to move on to do other things with their day we would like to give away one of your books hair piece to the classrooms are you ready for that nice yes. all right well let's do it so we have three classrooms that's with us live now and we're going to give one of a copy of hair piece to All right, Mrs. Banks class in South Carolina. So you're going to be getting a copy of right. Hair Piece. How awesome is that? Congratulations. All right. So um, a couple of things that, that I know that I'm curious about is one is, you know, I don't know if um, how many uh, listeners out there are aware, but, um, but I'll just ask you, did you draw your pictures in your book? This I did not. 
um, I do have books that I did, but I'm more of a cartoonist. So um, I do have six that I illustrate cartoons that I created when I was 12 years old. So, but no hairpiece. Um, I felt it needed to be a more more realistic. So the so the characters needed to look more real life, and so the publisher that I use, that I've used for all of my books, they have illustrators on staff. And so Savannah Horton um, is the gal who illustrated hair piece and she did an amazing job. All right. And so, and if folks don't know this, right? So many times we often think of the author and that uh, writes the story and creates the story, but Often, I don't think people realize that it takes a team to make a book become a book. And uh, and was it a lot of work working on Hairpiece with other people? Um, honestly, Hairpiece was one of my books that took me the longest to write, um, primarily because I was very um, conscientious of the ending. And I wanted, I did not want to be insulting. I wanted to be very sensitive to um, the culture, especially because I wrote the book here in Cameroon. So um, it, it took me a while to actually th think about how I wanted the story to end. Um, I knew I knew that I wanted Joanie to, to be trying the wigs and I knew that I wanted it to have the whole concept of beauty and self, self positive self-image, um, but I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to end it. And there was one, one reviewer who actually commented and said how it was such a surprise, the ending. Um, and she gave it 100% because of that. <laughs> so, um, because it was not what I thought it would be your typical, oh yeah, that's that's the way it ended, right? So it, it kind of caught her off guard when it ended the way it did. Um, and, uh, yeah, in terms of the writing itself, um, it did take me longer than more of my other books to do that, to, to actually figure out how I wanted to attend. And I'm lucky because the public I have um, I'm able to see the illustration as they're being done and as they're, as I feel that they are uh, reflecting the text. So we do work um, very closely in that way. And um, my understanding from, you know, working with some of the, the bigger publishers is you don't always have that opportunity. So I feel very blessed that I was able to make suggestions or comment and I didn't have to make a lot. The uh, you know Savannah did a, a fabulous job. So um, I'm just trying to think of which one I might have I might have commented on. You know, it says in the text this, but the the picture actually is a little off in that regard. So it might have been a very slight adjustment. But overall, um, I felt that she brought the story to very much to life. That's that's great. And for for those that that don't realize this, maybe. Um, I remember I used to get so frustrated as a student and I wasn't happy with things that I would write, whether it be a homework or report or a story uh, like this on the first try. Did you write hair piece and were you happy with the first draft? No, I would say um, all of my books, uh, yeah, you write, you write that first one down, but there's always edits um, before you end up with that, what you consider your polished piece. And again, I'm, I'm lucky as well because the, the publisher also is, has an editor. So if there are issues with um, any of the text or um, perhaps the way something has been said, can be said a little bit differently, we can do that. Um, but no, I wouldn't say that any, any of my books have ever been one right and then off they go. <laughs> I, I re I write and and then look over them and you know move things around maybe. Um, I do I must share that um, several of my books have actually come to me in dreams, so I do keep um, I used to keep a notepad next to the bed, but now I use my notes app on my phone. <laughs> so if something comes to me in the middle of the night, I actually get up and, and write it down. Especially if it's more than just a, a brief little idea, if it's several things, then I will write them down so that I don't forget them the next day. Because I have found that I've woken up and it's like, oh, what was that that I thought of in the night? It was amazing. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't write it. So, um, you know, it's, I'm not sure why stories come to me in dreams. I've 
heard other authors say that as well. But um, it, I think it's because of what you've seen around you and, and so much of what I write about is inspired by things around me. So whether my, it's an experience I've had or people I know or, or my pet, um, you know, the inspiration is, is everywhere. So, uh, you know, if, if there's <laughs> something I could say is, you know, for anyone thinking about writing is jot those ideas down when they come to you so that you don't lose them. That's great. I think it's a great reminder because, you know, sometimes um, I think, you know, especially young writers and uh, and I identify with this personally is I used to get fr so frustrated. So I had one of my favorite teachers uh, really, really instill in me that uh, no one's a great writer the first draft. <laughs> Right? So it's all about writing, rewriting, have someone spell check it, look at the grammar, and then, of course, give feedback on the story and like you did with the culture. So uh, one great um, thing that you were telling me before in our, our pre-show uh, meeting is that um, you're actually having this book translated to some of the local languages, native languages, um, Aside from, I know today English and French are spoken in Cameroon, but uh, can you tell me, tell us a little bit about that process and how important that might yeah. be for the local um, people? Oh, definitely. Um, I think that there's um, kind of a move similar to what happened in Canada. I used to work up in the Northwest Territories in Northern Canada, and they really were trying to get the local languages written down so they wouldn't be lost. And there's kind of a movement here in that way too. So they're wanting to save some of these languages. And one of my colleagues, uh, her first language is Basa. That's one of the local Cameroonian African languages. And so she is so excited to, she loves therapy. Um, she can't say enough about the book. She's a French teacher who had her grade six class read it. Um, so she has had it translated into Basa. And um, we're looking right now to see if we can get it published here locally in Cameroon, because it's really expensive to ship books to Cameroon from overseas. So if we can have this um, published locally, that would really save the cost. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're, we're looking at that right now, how we can go about that. I have the illustrations. Um, I'm very grateful to the publisher for allowing me to pursue this project um, so that we can get the literature into the local um, literature is, you know, they're aware that literature is very, education is very important, but the schools here are really lacking a lot on um, access to books. So um, this, this colleague of mine was teaching BASA as an after school activity. So she did have a group of students from our school joining her once a week after school to learn the language. And uh, so she's really looking forward to having this story available in, in the local language as well. So really about that. Oh, fantastic. And um, let's see, I did want to share because I was able to there find an is. image. Yeah. And, um, and so what kind of it animal is, is this again? It is nocturnal. <laughs> I did do a check. I was right. <laughs> and you said what kind of animal is this again? It's a considered called an anteater. I think it's the only... Um, Again, I don't want to. I don't want to say something wrong, but I think it's the only mammal with scales, so it's not a reptile. Um, again, I would have to look that up. But I, when we were talking about a previous student, we found out that it was um, the only scaly mammal. All right. So this was a. And they um, are. They are endangered specifically because of their scales. Oh wow. So these are, uh, this is from SouthAfricaToday.net, uh, shared via Creative Commons, and uh, a great conversation. If anyone wants to learn about Creative Commons, then go ask your teachers. All right. So um, thank you so much. I think we are getting close to our time or just over what we typically go. And I want to thank you so, so much for uh, spending your time with us today and sharing your wonderful book. And, uh, and of course, Mrs. Banks' classroom said a big old thank you 
multiple exclamation points for the book. I'm sure they're going to be excited to get it in their hands and look at all the beautiful illustrations up close and read it again. And uh, I want to give you a big uh, thank you and shout out for uh, jumping on with us today. And it looks like a big old thank you coming from Argentina right now in Buenos Aires. And, uh, and I'm sure Argentina know that I have been to Victoria Falls. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> awesome. And when was that? Do you remember? That was, mm, it was before COVID <laughs> 2017, I believe. Oh, 2017. They were guessing 2019, but 2017. And they give big old heart eye emoji uh, out there for it. <laughs> all right, uh, Explorers, if you loved uh, meeting author Dawn and, and all about her book today, definitely check us out next Tuesday, when April 5th at 9 o'clock. Eastern Time. Uh, we're going to have Marty Chan on the show, a fantastic speaker um, from Edmonton, Canada, and he's going to be reading one of his stories uh, to us uh, next week. So we look excited and forward to having uh, Marty Chan on the show with us. And uh, until next time, everyone, don't forget it's a big world out there. So keep reading around the world. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much.